Good morning and a warm welcome at our booth at ELA and um, to our viewers that are following us in the live stream. Um, my name is Lily Korps. I'm leading the technology radar at Bauhaus Luftfahrt. How do we identify and assess future technologies and trends that are drivers of change? This is the topic of our presentation. I will start off with um, the perspective on future technologies and associated innovation potentials. And my colleague Ulrike Schmalz will continue with trends of various origin and their implications on the aviation system. Design cycles in aviation are comparatively long. So that demands for an early detection of um, potentials for significant innovation. Um, this is why Bauhaus Luftfahrt has established the technology radar as uh, acting as an antenna for weak signals of change. Um, key objectives are, first of all, to um, be aware of a broad technology spectrum, and second, to bring step change advances um, from uh, cutting edge research and development into the aviation focus. Why is that relevant? Because in order to develop sound overall concepts in aviation, um, it is key to gain an in-depth understanding of future technology options as well as of their ultimate performance potentials. And on this basis, we are able to provide decision support for um, politics and also industry stakeholders. Now the question is, how do we identify and assess future technologies? On the left hand side, you can see the resources and methods that we're using. Let me highlight three key elements. The first one is a screening of forefront results in science and technology. The second one is an interdisciplinary culture. And finally, um, a proven method for future technology analysis, um, which is based on scientific principles and which enables a quantitative, a future-proof, and a repeatable assessment of innovation potentials. On the right hand side, you can see um, the multi-step process that we're following. So first of all, we um, want to collect a great number of um, weak signals. Um, and these signals are then brought into the aviation context by an uh, initial assessment. And after monitoring, we have gained enough information to select those that really have the potential for being drivers of um, change that are then analyzed in more detail um, within our project um, context. And as you can also see, there's a further um, key, uh, um, let's say, um, element of success, which is that the whole Bauhaus Luftfahrt team is involved in this process. Now you may ask, what are the technologies that we have on the radar? And you can see um, on the right hand side, this radar plot which just shows a selection of um, technologies um, that are of interest to us, um, clustered according to the different technology areas, as well as the um, uh, maturity level, which increases towards the center. Now, why is it this selection of technologies? Maybe one um, overarching goal is to identify technologies that um, could play a significant role in um, uh, reaching aviation's climate goals. So in terms of energy technologies, that translates into the quest for um, electrochemical energy um, conversion and storage devices that are of high performance. In terms of alternative fuels, that translates into the demand for te technologies enabling scalable, resource, and cost-effective production of alternative fuels. So for instance, here in the examples for synthetic jet fuel production um, or for liquid hydrogen. 
Um, in terms of materials, of course, we're looking for lightweight, high performance, but also multifunctional materials. And um, you can see um, an example is nanotechnology, which enables step change improvements in a range of um, different properties, from mechanical over electrical, thermal, um, aero, um, even aerodynamic and um, acoustic properties. And maybe it's also interesting to say that it's relevant on different complexity scales for materials, for energy technologies, up to load-bearing structures. Finally, there is a pull for technologies that enable um, intelligent, adaptive, and autonomous technologies that are maybe energy efficient and also real-time capable. So in this context, um, enabling technologies um, are based on novel um, computing concepts, for instance, brain-inspired, or um, using light for computation. Now let's turn to some examples. Um, the first example um, highlights that there are system level improvement potentials for polymer electrolyte fuel cells that enable to bring green hydrogen into aviation applications. And they stem from recent progress in high temperature approaches. Now, um, higher operating temperatures as compared with conventional low temperature um, uh, pendants is um, resulting in higher efficiencies and also facilitates easier water and thermal management. However, of course, high temperature performance that is required of the components is a challenge. So recent progress not only concerns advances in durability, but um, especially innovation with respect to the cooling system. Um, the industry first realization of using compressed turbo air, both for cooling and also um, for uh, oxygen supply, um, on the one hand side leads to a boost in the efficiency, and on the other hand leads to a significant reduction of the cooling system weight. So if you have a look on the right hand side, um, where you see a weight comparison, based on recent uh, data for low temperature approaches and this high temperature approach, you can um, see two important facts. The first one is that um, for the high temperature approach, the um, overall system weight is lowest. And the second one is actually um, an important trade-off if you compare the two columns on the right hand side. You see um, between um, higher stack weight with respect to the most advanced low temperature components and significantly lower cooling system weight. So what does that mean? That means that um, future improvements of the currently inferior electrode power densities provide a large lever for um, enhancing um, specific power at system level. And this is why um, this is a technology to watch from our perspective. Let's come to the second example, which is direct air capture, which refers to capturing CO2 directly from ambient air. And there are two key application potentials associated um, in aviation and also beyond. The first one is the provision of a renewable carbon feedstock for synthetic jet fuel at scale. Um, on the right hand side, on the upper side, you can see um, synthetic jet fuels are produced from water, CO2, and renewable energy. And you can also see that direct air, air capture allows um, CO2 recycling in the sense that CO2 emitted upon fuel burn um, can be captured again and used as a, a feedstock for um, synthetic jet fuel production. The second application potential refers to using direct air capture for carbon removal and subsequent storage, um, and hence as negative emission technology. Now the relevance of negative emission technologies is shown in the, figure, uh, in the bottom figure, um, which shows um, the global CO2 emissions um, from the recent IC, uh, IPCC report. And um, uh, you can also see that in order to reach the Paris climate goals, um, it is likely that um, it is essential to permanently remove carbon from the atmosphere. 
So the question is, which technology concepts are available and are emerging, and what are the prospects? So you can discriminate different approaches based on three major factors. The first one is uh, the development level. The next one is the process by which CO2 is captured and released. And finally, the energy requirements associated in terms of electrical and thermal energy of various grade. And um, on the right-hand side in this high-level visualization, you can see further key factors that are relevant for a comparative assessment and that also show key trade-offs between weaknesses and strength of the different technologies. So the message is um, that it is likely that different um, technology concepts will continue to coexist and that the ideal technology um, kind of depends on various factors like um, unit scale, um, like, um, uh, for instance, the infrastructure of deployment and also possible integration options. Now, fa finally, as a closing remark, let's have a look on the radar again. Um, here we have emerging electrochemical concepts, and um, they provide more flexible site selection as no thermal energy is required and also no process integration. And also um, energy demands are lower, presumably, and this would directly translate into uh, lower operating expenses. However, the technology is just emerging, so um, that means uh, that due to a lack of data, a full um, multi-criteria assessment is still outstanding. So to conclude, maybe three closing remarks on direct air capture. First of all, it is a technology which um, could be a driver of change as a key technology for net zero emission scenarios in aviation and beyond. Second point is that further technology development is needed um, in light of, is, ne um, is needed especially at drastic scale up um, in order to meet demands, but also in order to reduce cost efficiency by learning effects and um, economy of scale. And finally, um, it's um, essential to shed light on uncertainties and key, tra key trade-offs in order to optimize potentials and to derive sound transition scenarios. So this was the perspective on uh, future technologies and innovation potentials. And now I would like to hand over to my colleague Ulrike Schmalz, who will turn to the trends and their implications. Yeah, also, uh, thank you, Lily. Good morning from my side and uh, welcome here at the ILA booth and welcome at home and the live stream. My name is Ulrike Schmalz. I'm leading the trend monitor section here at Bauer's Luftfahrt. And uh, today I would just present you a glimpse of our approach, the trends we currently see, and how we derive um, drivers for the future of aviation. So as said, the trend monitor is really much concerned with a broad range of trends. In comparison to the trend radar we just learned about, we are concerned with more technology-driven trends. So what kind of developments are involving based on technology? That's how we complement each other. But we also much broader in terms of social trends, political trends, ecological trends. Um, really every development we see we have on our radar and try to assess. In doing so, we really want to trigger a discussion and raise awareness of trends for us as a think tank, but also for you as project partners, for the industry partners, and within our research projects and publications, etc. In doing so, we really want to try to understand the future in a better way. However, we know that really nobody knows what comes for certain in the future, but we try to shed some light at the trend monitor. So, how can we actually detect trends? We use various sources for that purpose. We look at scientific publications, reports, newsletters, etc. But we also in strain a strong exchange with experts and our project partner, even outside of aviation. So we're really broad in our view. 
And we also look at other data, more novel data, such as social media data, startup data, etc. And for having that broad view, we will make sure that all the important developments are on our radar and identified at first. Going through the trend funnel, we evaluate and assess those trends in terms of its impact for mobility, but also for the air transport system specifically. Then, when we have identified the most pressing trends, we use, um, use cases in terms of projects, in terms of publications, collaborations, etc., to have a more deep understanding of them, to also make a quick or very first impression, how can we derive implications for that, and to understand a trend early on. So what are the trends we see for 2022? This is just an excerpt of the trend database we have here. So we do have more trends on our radar, but these are the most pressing one we see now for you here at ILA. Um, the trend database is updated and reworked within the think tank on a regular basis because trend research is really dynamic. We need to make sure we have all the new developments on our radar and talk about them. And here you do see uh, a first assessment within the trend funnel when we have trends identified and see, okay, how relevant they are. And this shows the maturity level of a trend, meaning is the trend already observable? Is it already around us? Has it kicked in? Or is it just emerging or even a weak signal far ahead? And you see here, for instance, that trends we have identified, um, well, just a few months ago are already around us, such as fake news or even uh, the new work involvement based on the COVID-19 pandemic, but also other um, well, factors triggered the new work movement, really. So this is already here, so we will make sure to be prepared for that as a think tank. On the other side, trends where we just see weak signals are things like biodiversity, environmental justice, um, and some other things related to environmental protection. So we need to ask ourselves here as a think tank, but also with you, are we already prepared for a sustainable future or more sustainable future? Um, that's something we see as a first impression out of this expert assessment. How do these trends now actually shape the future of aviation and how we can we make first assessments out of it? We do see that those trends affect future air travel, passenger travel, demand side, call it as you want, but also the entire air transport system. For instance, sustainability is actually, um, well, really raised awareness among consumers. And we not just see that in air travel mobility, we see that in other factors too. That does not mean that consumers or passengers in that sense change their behavior. Right? It just shows that it's an important issue people think about and talk about, and we all know that. Further, we see the new generation of passengers. It's an important customer segment that actually will, will need to travel for decades. It's important to understand they are hyper-connected. They look for more experienced travel. We need to make sure, as an aviation system, to be prepared for that new and important customer base. That also means we have new forms of tourism, speaking of virtual tourism or uh, space tourism even. So you see it evolving and it also goes hand in hand. We also see as a think tank that passengers want to spend their travel time in a more value-adding way. So travel time should not be perceived as lost time. People want to use something, make use of the free time in the airplane, but also along the door-to-door -door travel chain. And that brings me actually to shaping of the aviation system we do believe at Bauer's Luftfahrt that only if you look at the entire travel chain from door to door, we can really make improvements or many improvements uh, for the passenger experience, but also for the well, entire operational system. So we need to make a holistic view at that point. If you're interested to know more about door to door, because we researched that for years, make sure to check out our CESAR project. Uh, it's coordinated by Bauer's Luftfahrt and you can just scan the QR code or um, look it up in the internet via our website. We have a lot of information about that. Further, personalization was already triggered with the passenger side. It's an important factor trend affecting the entire system. And it also means we need to really offer a menu from where budget travel to more premium, um, well, advanced space level that every passenger finds their way when traveling with planes. 
Another aspect which we strongly believe as a think tank will be essential now and in the future is the social acceptance of new technology as an essential part of technology strategies. We need a holistic view on more innovation and new technologies. We see at ELA all these great innovations, hydrogen-based solutions, data-driven business models, advanced air mobility, URM, regional air travel, but do we actually understand how society and the end customers react towards that? How's the willingness to pay for such services if prices increase? We know from research already that knowledge is really little in that area and that we need to more, more about, uh, explore that area further to make novel technologies a success. Lastly, digitalization, use of data, data sharing between providers and in that sense, especially in Europe, data protection is a huge issue we need to explore further and we need to come up with better, more feasible solutions that also work in the market. So that was just a quick glimpse in the trend monitor activities. Um, we do much more. If you know, want to know more about us, feel free to download our trend report. It's freshly published here uh, with the QR code or for you at home uh, with the screen. It shows you more uh, information about the trends, a definition, but also what kind of scientific methods we use in the use cases to explore them further. And with that said, I would like to thank you very much for listening here at ELA, but also at home. Um, make sure to follow us on LinkedIn. Um, talk with us here at the ELA booth if you're interested to know more about us. We love to talk about future trends, future technology. All the colleagues are here. Um, and yeah, again, thank you very much also Lily for her presentation and have a great day at the ELA. Thank you. Any questions? Now or later? No? Thank you very much.